bipartisan bill has been introduced that would require counties to pay workers their higher civilian salary during a military deployment. Joining me to talk more about this effort is the Senate bill's author, Senator Andrew Lang. Welcome. Well, thanks, Shannon, for having me. You've teamed up with DFL State Representative John Lesh in the House to propose that active duty service members who work for Minnesota counties mm -hmm. receive differential pay. You are currently a major in the Minnesota Army National Guard. Representative Lesh is a retired Army National Guard captain. Mm -hmm. How does your experience influence bringing forward this proposal? Well, uh, it was just a, a couple days after the election, actually, John Lesh called me and uh, told me of his idea. And, uh, and, and like I'll probably uh, talk about a little bit later, is we are kind of in the infancy stages of at least this bill and, and how it's progressing. And uh, we're looking really close at what it's going to cost fiscally. Um, but yeah, uh, my experience, you know, uh, the National Guard, uh, for all the things it is and all the, the, the positives, you know, it's a, a brother and a sisterhood and all the, the things that I would, I would always encourage anybody else to, to enlist and, and really experience as well. Um, it also is very hard on families. It's very hard on civilian employers. You know, over the years, uh, it's uh, when you deploy, and you deploy multiple times, it really has a, a uh, let's just say negative, not detrimental, but negative impact on your, uh, on your civilian career and as you try to it's, it's a tough balancing act that we all play uh, with our civilian employers. And, and I do have a couple other bills that are going to be coming up that may be addressed from a different angle. But it's definitely a balancing act between those civilian employers. And I applaud all the civilian employers that, that continue to employ us and uh, deal with our absences. So, uh, and you were deployed twice so was, far in your career? Yeah, three yeah. different times. So. The idea of equalizing the higher civilian pay to the mm -hmm. typically lower uh, pay for military is not a new idea. No. State employees received the benefit in 2003, school mm -hmm. districts in 2004. Some counties already do, but they not do. all counties. So your proposal would expand it to all counties. Uh, should it just be standard, expanded maybe not only just all counties, but municipalities, all all uh, entities Everybody. involved or, or across <laughs> yeah. the state because it is such you a... You know, that's it's definitely a topic of conversation that we've had uh, between Lesh and myself and, uh, and of course, between, uh, you know, Veterans Committee members. Um, this is, I think, a, a, a chip off the block. I think it's a, it definitely brings a little bit of notice of the, the issue. Um, you know, we've, we've talked at length on, on what it's going to cost. Uh, we're, that's still up in the air a little bit. We have that that local uh, impact note that's out there right now that we're going to get back and find out exactly what this means. How many people are going to be affected? Uh, when it comes to counties, I, there isn't, I don't believe on a statewide basis, there isn't a huge number of individuals that are going to be affected by this. But one thing more than the other, it does bring attention to it and I, th I think it's uh, going to continue forward. And one other thing, uh, during the press conference when this initiative was announced, you spoke of how the temporary loss of salary impacts recruiting and retention right. for the service, particularly for those like you who are further in their careers and have families and more financial obligations and just a lot more responsibility. Right. So can you, just as an example, like how much of a difference are we looking at between, you know? Well, it varies so greatly. That's, that's the tough thing. That's what makes it difficult because there's so many different jobs within the military. And, uh, you know, you see, you know, just last weekend I was with a soldier that on the civilian side is a, a criminal defense attorney, and on the Army side he's an enlisted soldier that really is kind of middle of the ranks, and as he deploys, he sure isn't going to make even near what he does uh, as a criminal defense So it defense could be, attorney. say, as much as $20,000 for some individuals. For his, oh, I would assume it's much greater than that for his particular case. Uh, on the other flip side of it, there is some folks that, uh, you know, are, are well within their career and as an op or, or even an officer in the military and could quite possibly make more on deployment than they do. So it's not it's not a, a, a narrow little sliver of of what this bill may or may not affect. But it's a complex issue, but oh, the absolutely. idea is that you want people to not suffer financially right. for serving their country. Oh, absolutely, and that's and that's what I mean when I talk about recruiting and retention for the National Guard. That's that's tough. Some of the toughest stuff they have. It isn't necessarily getting the young folks in and getting them. Uh, you know, trained up and uh, deployable force. It's the the folks that are my age that have you know somewhat uh, in advanced in their civilian careers that physically, literally, <laughs> and quite often mentally getting ready for another deployment. Uh, and and then you know with the loss of income and the loss of you being gone, and it's you know it's it's a tough road to road to hoe. So we try to. Uh, this is just a step in the right direction, I think, as far as the bill is concerned. So, 
Well, Senator Lang, I want to thank you for your mm -hmm. perspective on this, and I look forward to hearing more about it. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.